Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Supply and Demand Analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and an equally warm welcome to you if you are returning. And if you like the analysis that I provide every week, please don't forget to press the like button and uh, subscribe. And so uh, question of the week uh, before we get into the analysis was sent to me on YouTube and the person said, good day, Sir Leon. I got a quick question. Does the dollar appreciate on bad news surrounding its economy based on safe haven appeal in a risk off environment such as we are having during the US banking situation weeks back and the current sentiment on the US debt ceiling challenge? Because what uh, that's what I observed. The dollar rallied on the back of these bad news. Please explain it better. Why isn't the dollar the one to be affected by the news? And it is a great question and something that I will uh, get into as we uh, go through uh, the analysis uh, in, in the video. So because I will be talking about, you know, the debt ceiling and I can kind of tie the question in with that. And so uh, getting into the week ahead, 22nd of May. So this week in the US, the spotlight will be on the debt ceiling negotiations, FMOC uh, meeting minutes, um, and uh, um, and several Fed speeches. Additionally, investors will be closely monitoring data on personal income and spending PCE prices and the second estimate of GDP growth, corporate profits, durable goods orders, services and manufacturing PMIs, as well as new pending home sales. So a lot going on this week with data. Uh, furthermore, fresh uh, May PMIs are anticipated in the UK, Australia, Euro area, Japan and Germany. Finally, inflation rates for the UK will be released and monetary... Um, and monetary policy decisions are awaited for China, New Zealand, and that's pretty much um, that's that's it. So they've got, I've done a bit of a, a typo there, uh, FOMC, and uh, yeah. So that's basically what we've got going on uh, this week. So let's get into a bit more of the technicals and some fundamentals, and starting off from the dollar index, and dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies, and you can see, in fact, um, uh, my bias actually was to the uh, short side and looking for a decent area to look for shorts, not on the dollar index, but just on other uh, dollar currencies, and the dollar's been rallying um, this week on the expectation of um, a hike in interest rates, um, because of uh, recent data that has come out that has supported that and inflation. Um, and also as well, the expectation that the debt ceiling would actually be uh, um, be resolved at some point. But things have turned at the last minute on Friday, which has um, uh, caused the dollar to kind of pull back in a, a little bit. And so dealing with uh, the po uh, policy rates first and uh, Powell steers policy debate uh, with clear signal on June rate pause. And so, again, as I was saying, during the week and up to, you know, come from last week to this week, uh, we started having um, the market price in the probability of a rate hike in June. And it actually reached, I think, as high as maybe 38, 39% on, um, on the CME FedWatch tool. And uh, this is the probability, um, uh, it's basically, uh, I'll read it out. It says, uh, this is the likelihood that the Fed will change the federal uh, target rate at upcoming FOMC meetings according to interest rate traders, analyze the probabilities of changes uh, to the Fed uh, rate and US monetary policy as implied by 30-day Fed funds futures pricing data. And so we keep an eye on this. And, um, and, up until I think it was, like I said, Friday, uh, Friday before um, Jerome Powell's speech, this was basically as high, the, the probability of a rate hike was as high as about 38, 39%. And this was down to maybe something like 50 something percent, 60 something percent. And, um, and so, um, yeah, when, once we got Jerome Powell's uh, speech uh, that came out that he was a, a bit more, um, uh, signaling a rate pause, 
basically the market has pared back ex expectations for now. Who knows? It could obviously, you know, it's a moving target. It's not static. So but it is data dependent. And so I'll just read a little bit of this, which says the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell gave a clear signal he is inclined to pause interest rate increases next month, taking uh, command of the policy debate over several officials suggested uh, they wanted to keep hiking. And he said, we've come a long way in policy tightening and the stance of policy is restrictive and we face uncertainty about the lagged effect of our tightening so far and about the extent of credit tightening from recent bank stresses, Powell told a Fed, uh, con sorry, Powell told a Fed conference Friday in Washington. Having come this far, we can afford to look at the data and the evolving outlook to make careful assessments, he said, reading from prepared notes. So investors paired bets on a rate hike next month to around 13% after Powell's comments compared with 33 before the spike. So that was reflected again on here. So um, yeah, the, the, the chances of a potential pause um, are on the cards, but it depends on whether the market believes um, uh, Jerome Powell, right? But there are things uh, um, going on you know, um, as far as, well, the debt ceiling that they have to be concerned about as to why they may or may not also or they have to factor in why they may or may not um, uh, high rates as well. And obviously one of them is the debt ceiling and Biden seeks to call uh, McCarthy after debt limit talks hit impasse. And this happened on Friday as well. And so Joe Biden directed his aides to schedule a call on Sunday with White House Speaker Kevin McCarthy after the top Republican accused the White House of backtracking in talks on raising the U.S. debt limit. <clears throat> and so uh, for those of you out there who um, you don't know what the, uh, the debt ceiling means, right, uh, I'll just read this article just quickly. It's not going to read the whole five minutes, maybe maybe about a minute or two just to get an understanding of why the debt ceiling is um, so uh, such an important thing. And so the battle over raising the debt ceiling has threatened to rattle markets and wreak havoc on the US economy. So political leaders in Washington have been arguing for months over the federal debt limit and the conditions under which to raise it. Failure to come to an agreement would mean a first ever default on some of the government's obligations. The debt ceiling is essentially a cap on US government borrowing right now at nearly 31.4 trillion. Since January, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has been using special measures to avoid a payment default, but she's warned that the Treasury's risk risks running out of cash for its obligations as soon as June the 1st. So JP Morgan, uh, CEO Jamie Dimon, and other bank executives have warned of dire consequences if a deal isn't reached. And it says here, it's a fluid situation with ongoing discussions between White House and congressional leaders. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said Thursday negotiations would agree to a deal in principle as soon as this weekend. But then talks broke down on Friday with Republican representatives Garrett Graves saying the White House was being unreasonable. So um, this is basically um, an issue uh, that potentially could be um, was expected to be resolved sooner rather than later. And to kind of go back to the uh, the question from uh, Universalis2438, and it was talking about um, risk off, right? And so the debt ceiling is a risk off situation. It's a risk off scenario, um, which typically the US dollar would be a risk off in a safe haven currency. So in a risk off environment, when there's lots of fear, uncertainty and doubt in the market, money will go out of risk on assets um, into risk off assets or safe haven uh, assets like gold, for example, and, uh, and currencies like the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc and the US dollar. Now, when the risk off um, event is actually originating in the US, then it wouldn't really make sense uh, logically uh, for the dollar to rally if 
um, you know, uh, their experience in the risk off event, right? But what's happened is, is that the market is actually priced in the uh, risk event being resolved. So although their headlines have been talking about the debt ceiling, the debt ceiling, you know, it's a it's a risk event, it's a risk off event, who knows, who knows, the market has actually expected the risk event to get resolved. So they're getting ahead of the um, of the news and thinking, okay, well, the probabilities are that they're going to, you know, raise the debt ceiling. So let's just, you know, take advantage of this while everybody else, um, including myself to a certain degree, was thinking um, that, okay, a risk off event would mean money would come out of the dollar. The market has actually been pricing in the news event anyway as far as what they expect which is basically a positive outcome if it was a negative outcome that that's what they expected then the dollar would actually be falling but because they expect a positive outcome from the risk event they're getting ahead of that and making money to the upside and so that's pretty much what happens and what you need to think about during risk events is what is the expectation that the event will be um, uh, will be resolved, um, you know, a positive result or actually a negative result, right? And whether, you know, and, and that um, is really where the money is made. It's the expectation of what, um, of how the event and risk event is going to get resolved. So for example, with the banking crisis, um, you know, for now, there's been no other banks. So the expectation is that um, the, the, the banking uh, crisis is being contained for now. Now, if the Federal Reserve starts to high rates even more, that might put pressure on other smaller banks and they might start to default and it might cause like a domino effect. So the, the, the Fed have to keep an eye on um, not only just raising rates because of inflation, but they have to, you know, a counter of that could be actually more banks um, starting to default, which is what they don't want, because then that would bring on um, a potential recession, a credit crunch, etc. And so it's you have to be a bit more dynamic and a bit fluid in your thinking when it comes to these things. It's not an exact science, right? Fundamentals is not a science. It doesn't mean that one, you know, A equals uh, B or one equals two, right? Or one plus one equals two. It's not. It's not like that. You have to be a bit more dynamic in your thinking when it comes to the expectation of where money is likely to flow and the result of the event. So although the dollar um, is under pressure in terms of the risk sentiment, overall, the, um, the debt ceiling is, is expected to be um, uh, resolved. And so that actually has made money go into the dollar. Right. So so that's pretty much an explanation. I hope, you know, the explanation um, makes uh, sense. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so the dollar going back to the dollar, that's the reason for the rally. We've seen the rally this week in the, in the dollar, the expected um, uh, interest rate uh, hikes uh, or an interest rate hike um, being priced in as well as um, a resolution to the debt ceiling. But now we've come to a bit of a pause just before this uh, or just beyond that supply zone and just under this uh, um, supply zone here. So we're in a bit of a no man's land, but let's see what happens this week. I probably expect the market to, um, with, with uncertainty, to continue to fall, in fact. So to the downside, we could see, obviously, if, um, if things continue to... Um, create a positive environment for the uh, US dollar, meaning that they may continue to con uh, uh, hike rates that has to be priced in. So you could actually see the dollar start to um, uh, move higher, but I'm, my bias is to, at least for the second half of the year to get to look for uh, short trades on the dollar. And again, we're not looking at uh, shorting the dollar index. We'd be looking for shorting on you know, something like the uh, dollar yen. And so speaking of the uh, dollar yen, we've seen prices break past this supply zone. And that supply zone was, was due for a, a break anyway, because that level had been touched several times, you know, once, twice already. And the more times a level is touched, 
the, um, the the weaker it becomes. And you can see my analysis from last week, looking at this demand zone, prices did bounce off of this demand zone, came back again. And we had some positive news out from the dollar. But uh, now what we've got is, and I'll just draw and update this. We've got a demand zone right here. And potential uh, supply. And I think there may be scope for a, uh, a short trade at the moment. Um, the, the yen, again, holding rates, but possible yield curve adjustment June or July coming through also as well. There was some positive news surrounding um, their economy and rising inflation, which puts pressure on the Bank of Japan to potentially do something about uh, yield curve control. So I think um, this supply zone and also as well, the higher supply zone, I think are really nice shorting opportunities uh, to buy the yen, hopefully. Um, and again, depending on whether the the um the good news for uh the dollar starts to run out of steam right i think the debt ceiling um has been priced in or is being priced in um and i can't see that you know even when it you know june first comes around i can't see the market really you know taking off to the upside i think then after that it's going to be really about whether the fed are going to potentially cut rates later on this year so if you do want to get short on that on that yen um, on that dollar yen, then you know this is the area to start to look for uh, some short trades. If you want to buy the dollar, then you're looking for pullbacks into this zone before looking at getting uh, long. Uh, looking at the dollar Swiss again, Friday's uh, you know news came out negative for the dollar, so we did get a move back up to this area on the. Um, on the dollar Swiss, and again, a, a big rejection from it. So let's see if you want to look for short trades there. If you're looking for any kind of long trades, and again, that supply zone had been touched several times. So again, I expected that to um, start to uh, break. But if you do want to get long on the dollar Swiss, it looks like these are the areas to look for any kind of long trades. Again, you would look for, um, go down to that, the lower time frames and look for uh, any kind of um, uh, trade setups that you'd want to see within those zones. Um, dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, again, a bit of a tricky one because the Canadian dollar actually um, had some good news as well. And there's I think there's a little bit of a hawkish um, hawkish tilt to their uh, to their bias uh, for the Bank of Canada because inflation came out uh, higher than expected. So the market could be looking at the potential for a, a surprise hike, and that really would surprise uh, everybody. It's not really a pair that I'm interested in trading anymore. Um, there, there was um, a bit of, uh, I did have a bias to short the Canadian dollar and I still do to a certain extent, but I think that um, uh, it's going to be a bit more of a difficult trade. I think for me, um, if you are looking to get involved in this and buy the US dollar, look for, you know, bigger pullbacks or you're looking at buying the Canadian dollar. I think the, the absolute highs would be decent or even a move just above that. But I'm not really looking at this uh, this currency pair. Fundamentally, it doesn't really make it, uh, too much sense to me. The uh, New Zealand dollar, um, I think, is a, it could be a decent buy on a pullback. And that's providing the Federal Reserve don't hike rates and the uh, RBNZ, the uh, New Zealand Central Bank, actually do stop to hike rates or continue to be more aggressive in hiking rates because they already are expected to hike rates this week. So a pullback <clears throat> into that zone would be nice to look for buy trades on the um, on the New Zealand dollar. But this is with the Federal Reserve expected to hold rates and the RBNZ looking to hike rates. So that's where the divergence is coming in. Um, if you are looking to buy the, um, the US dollar, then I think... Again, that level has been touched several times. So, you know, I think a, a, a sell there isn't necessarily the greatest. You might want to wait for a move. And it's just so up at these highs before looking at getting, 
people getting short. And even that level's kind of been touched uh, several times, but it's led to a new low. So um, that has it going in its favour. Uh, the pound dollar, pound dollar, and um, the pound this week, fundamentally, uh, Bank of England chief economist says UK inflation at turning point. And Hugh Pill says a key measure of price increase should decrease. And the UK economy grew by a sluggish 0.1% in first quarter of the year. So uh, Bank of England chief economist Hugh Pill gave the clearest indication yet that officials think they might have, uh, sorry, they might be able to pause their rate hiking cycle, saying inflation has hit a turning point and is likely to slow. But you also have Bank of England, sorry, Bank of America. Yeah, Bank of America, apologies, uh, expects another UK rate hike after hawkish Bank of England forecast. So um, there's a bit of, uh, there's, there's a bit of at odds at the moment um, uh, and a bit of uncertainty around whether they will hike or, or hold. I think it all depends on the, um, what the inflation numbers are this week. If they come out, and they are uh, higher than expected, then you're likely to have the pound start to rally um, because then the expectation for a rate, uh, an extra rate hike would have to be then priced in, right? So this could be the floor. Um, if inflation does come down as expected, I do think that we could see a deeper pullback into uh, these one, two, three levels. So Let's see what happens uh, this week. Um, it's going to be very important to uh, to have a to keep a watch on the data. All right, and let me just uh, update this uh, supply zone right here. And you've got kind of like a supply zone sitting on top of this uh, sitting on top of this demand zone. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just draw this down here. Yeah, make it a bit clearer. So. These are your options. If you do want to be a buyer of the US dollar, then the first supply zone, if prices pull back to that area or the second area there. So, um, yeah, the expectation is for the Fed to hold rates now um, and one more hike expected. But again, it's data dependent. It is data dependent. Um, and that could be um, hopes could be dashed for a, for a rate hike if inflation is seen as coming down uh faster than expected or as expected. Uh, going to the euro dollar and the euro dollar again this week, the um, euro not necessarily being weak, but the dollar, um, the market pricing in an unexpected rate hike has pushed the uh, dollar down to like the 107s. And so um, we've come down to really fair value or just below fair value for the exchange rate. So if we look at the low to the high, so the low would be what would be considered an absolute bargain price and the high would be expensive when it comes to exchange rates. 50% is what is known as fair value. So we've come down just below that fair value area into the area that I thought that prices uh, could potentially bounce from that support and resistance within that demand zone. And so um, the catalyst for the turn is possibly the fact that the market has now got ahead of itself and the market and uh, and the Fed may not actually uh, high rates, right? And if they don't, then I think the market should want to go uh, higher. We do have a supply zone here that we need to get past. But ultimately, I do think that any moves to the downside, even down to the 107s, right, should be a decent buying opportunity, providing that inflation comes down for the US dollar and um, the euro keep hiking, which um, Christine Lagarde say, uh, says that she sees key juncture as ECB needs sustainably high rate. Yeah, so we need, she says, we have to keep, sorry, we have to really buckle up on achieving the 2% inflation goal. Uh, ECB president speaks in broadcast interview with Spain's TVE. So the European Central Bank is at a key juncture because it needs to keep preserving, um, a per, sorry, persevering with its monetary policy uh, just as consumer price growth shows signs of slowing, uh, Christine, President Christine Lagarde said, now is a moment which is also quite critical because inflation is beginning to go down, she said in an interview with Spanish State One Channel TV broadcast Friday. We are beginning to see the um, efficiency of measures 
but we still need to have high and sustainably high interest rates. So very hawkish, right? Very hawkish still. And um, and so, yeah, going to the chart, while well, you've got one central bank that's, you know, maybe looking to pause. Christine Lagarde is coming out and pretty much saying that they're, they're quite hawkish. And so this now starts to look like um, a decent price to look to uh, get involved, again, not financial advice, of course, but just telling you what I'm doing. And so, yeah, that's um, this is the area here. If you do want to get involved and try and short the uh, the US dollar, then that first supply zone is where, sorry, short the US dollar, short the euro, then that uh, supply zone is where you want to get involved. Um, Aussie dollar, the Australian dollar um, is a bit weak at the moment uh, based off of some China data um, coming out which wasn't supportive of the um, uh, isn't supportive of Australia as Australia are uh, one of their biggest trade partners. And so if China are not growing, then um, exports and imports are going to be affected, which affects the economy. Um, inflation looks like it's um, stubborn in, in Australia, but I think um, uh uh, the, the, the RBNZ, if I, if I remember correctly, um, are a bit more dovish, slightly dovish on um, on hiking rates, um, or they've changed their stance, if I, if I remember correctly. Anyways, um, at the moment, I think I think the Australian dollar hopefully should be a buy at some point once um, China do start to get their act together. But I do think this level has been touched several times, so. I think price could come down to the uh, 65s before uh, bouncing if it doesn't come down here and bounce off of there. That could be where we look for uh, any kind of long trades if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar. If you're looking to buy the, and let me just update this, uh, this demand zone from over here. It should be the last one. And you have a supply zone right here. So right on top. Um, this is where you want to look for any kind of short trades if you're looking to buy the uh, the US dollar. Um, so the expectation actually for a hold um, has is is really kind of dominant at the moment. So and that and that's for the RBA as well. So again, that's more data dependent. So uh, let's see. I think when when they were talking about inflation, maybe about a week or two ago, they were quite hawkish. But the market is expecting uh, actually more of a hold than a hike. So um, you know that's where we could enter into this uh, this range or this auction. Um, and I think the sixty five fifties down to the sixty five round numbers are probably where it's a decent area to look for any kind of buys if you want to buy the Australian dollar. And finally, gold. So gold did have a really nice pullback into a zone uh, that I was expecting from last week. It had a little bounce based off of the news. So if you do want to be a buyer of gold, any kind of little pullback that would be quite nice. Um. If you're looking to sell gold, it looks like there are some, I think probably all of this is going to be supply. Um, yeah, you're looking for a pullback into these zones. And when you're, again, if one of the things that you can do, if you know, you're thinking that there's a wide zone of supply, is break it down and look for areas of support and resistance within those areas of uh, wide areas of supply and demand, either on a daily or an intraday uh, time frame. And uh, that's where you want to look for uh, any kind of um, any trades as confluence, right? So you've got resistance there, resistance, resistance, support, support. So the underside of this supply zone is decent for a potential uh, sell. If you want to look to sell and you think that the dollar is going to strengthen, right? Because you're not just selling gold, you're thinking that, you know, thinking gold's going to get weaker, you're going to, you're thinking that the dollar's going to get stronger. So you have to understand, you know, the reasons why the dollar is going to get um, stronger and, and gold to get weaker. So um, I think prices have come down to a um, really nice bargain area. So any buyers, for, I think, for gold, if you're bullish on gold into the medium long term, I think it's going to be nice. And even cheaper, in fact, would be, in fact, the 1900s. I think that's going to be a really nice area to look for. Uh, buying gold if you're a gold bug anyways guys uh, that's it for this week um, 
But again, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And until the next video, hope you have a great trading week. Take care.